<clears throat> a lot of times people ask us what to do, um, but we also many times are pulled in to evaluate what someone else has done. And we see a lot of this. We see a lot of this work where, you know, maybe somebody read a book or watched one of our videos and uh, attempts to, to sort of build a, a warehouse. There, there are places where this might be a good fit. You know, maybe it's a, this is typically what a data science use case looks like. I pull a lot of data down to my Jupyter notebook and I will do all my analytics there. Certainly, you know, we see that as part of a prototyping exercise, but we, we do not recommend. So don't do this. This is one of those slides that is exactly what not to do. And that is bring in a bunch of tables, raw tables, and then build many, many views. So virtual warehouse sometimes is what people call it. Bring in many, many virtual views of this data. This has been tried many, many times and we, we've never seen this, this work. And we'll talk about sort of why you would not want to do this in Snowflake in particular, but we, we don't recommend this even with, with other architectures. Within Snowflake, we at least have this idea of materialized views, and those give us better performance, better control, better capabilities, because we've, we've prepared the data in such a way that it's better to be consumable. Don't get Rich or I or, or Jared wrong in this conversation. Their views are important. We like using yeah. views. They're an abstraction layer away from what your physical table looks like so that your BI tools continue to function. It's not the views that are the problem, but views that are used on top of raw data, that is where the problem is. Or views yeah. on views on views on views. So here's your, here's your uh, views on views, Jared. We'll see this a lot. Um, we're landing all this data in these tables, and then we create views, and and you know we're building a whole pipeline in views. We've got views on top of views, and and then this view is is consuming data from from other views and other tables, and it's it's enriching the data and, and doing all of this. And um, you know what happens is uh, in the example that we've got here across the top, we've got some tables, you know, table A through table G. And then we've got some views on those. So table one is combining, our view one is combining table A and B. And, and um, you know, when we're doing just a layer of, of views on top of tables, the, we don't really see any issues. But, but as we, the further we go down, views on top of views on top of views, uh, joining those together, the complexity gets to the point where, where there's, there are a number of challenges um, that, that come into play, especially when we're talking about um, Snowflake. One of those is, is the loss of query cache. Um, so what happens in Snowflake, we've got query cache. For those of you that have you've been working on Snowflake, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Uh, you know, we, we run a query uh, that the result set for that query is there cached for 24 hours. And so if the query doesn't change or the underlying data doesn't change and you go and, and run that same query over again, Snowflake does not even, uh, you don't even have to get to the virtual warehouse. You don't even have to get to the compute layer. Snowflake is going to say, hey, you already ran this query. The, the underlying data has not changed. So boom, here you go. Here's your result set. Mm -hmm. and so, you know, think about uh, where, where you've got uh, a bunch of dashboards and you've got a bunch of people that are refreshing these dashboards. Um, and, and so it's this, a bunch of these little teeny queries that are just hitting over and over and over again. With the query cache, in that case, it's not refreshing. It doesn't have to rerun those queries. What happens is when we start getting views on top of views on top of views, the queries become so complex that in the cloud services layer, the optimizer, it's looking at this and it basically says, you know what, I don't know if this query has <laughs> been run or not. Uh, this is so complex that you actually lose the query cache and it, it's gonna run that query again. It doesn't recognize that it's, the, that it's the same query. Hey folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.